DCS crew, what is up, guys? Welcome back. Now, I gotta ask you, uh, do you remember when I did that quick review on this guy right here? This is the best tech sledgehammer. Um, I said that there was a there was a couple of things that were pretty unique on this knife, but one thing that kind of threw me off was when uh, I looked really really closely at the uh, the thumb stud. I noticed that it was kind of it was kind of loose, and I was trying to find a way to be able to go ahead and uh, you know fix it, maybe tighten it up, because the action was great. The action is pretty awesome actually, uh, but there was something about it. It just wasn't. You know, it just felt loose. It felt like this was gonna come off. And I just thought that was a kind of weird thing for them. Um, I tried fixing it and I couldn't fix it. So I reached out to them and uh, their customer service actually responded until, but I've been so busy. I haven't been able to go ahead and uh, get the video going, but I'm gonna do it today. And the reason being is because they went ahead and they sent me the replacement. I haven't opened it yet because I was waiting for you guys uh, to see it firsthand. I wanted to see if there were gonna be any defects right out of the box, but uh, they also asked me if I could review a second knife and they brought that in too. So I'm gonna do a quick unboxing of, of these two. I'm gonna show you uh, if they went ahead and they fixed this and I'm gonna go ahead and show off uh, the uh, new knife. So uh, we'll go ahead and start with this right after the intro. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, uh, before I get started with the review on the Sledgehammer, uh, I, guess, I guess part two of uh, that particular review, I wanted to go ahead and open this one really quick. Uh, it says here, this is uh, model number BL01A, and the name of it is the Falco. Um, this is going to be a first, ladies and gents, so if you give me a second, I'm going to go ahead and unzip this and open it up, see what this is about. Okay, all right, I see you, I see you, Mr. Falco, I like that pivot collar, okay, I like that side too, all right, I like that nice looking pocket clip, it's got that little uh, kind of swedge there, okay, you got the carbon fiber and then G10 right through the middle. You can see here, so you have that, that glimmer of the carbon fiber, and then you have that G10 right there. Nice. It's a flipper, and it does have that little thumb hole. I wonder if I can access that. Just do a quick side, front, side, and back. Nice little uh, backspacer there. Let's go ahead and check out the blade. Oh, that is nice. That is nice. Looks like somebody held it before it got to me, but hey. I'm not complaining, okay. You see, 154 cm steel, that's what I like to see. Okay, so this is probably one of their, their budget or semi-budget, okay. And then looking at the um, maker's mark there, it looks like, is it this way? Yeah, I think it is. Or is it this way? I don't know, it looks like the same. Okay, so it's a combo design. And then you see uh, best text info right there. You go ahead and, ooh, that action is good. Awesome, okay, let me go ahead and try and, ooh, child, there's a nice, nice size here. Okay, okay, I see you, Falco. We're gonna have a review on you soon. That's gonna go in my pocket. And now we're gonna go ahead and check out the Best Tech Sledgehammer and see what the newer version actually uh, does. Now, um, I did have a little bit of, a, of an issue with the original one that they sent out. It had my card at handle, beautiful blade. The action was great, but the thumb stud was messed up. So they went ahead and they sent me another variant. This is a G10 version. Nice bright orange. And uh, let me go ahead and get this towel really quick and clean it uh, before I go ahead and show it off here. Both of the knives came like they have been checked out before they sent, which is actually a good sign because it, it, it means that they probably looked at it before they sent it out to me. Okay, so very similar to the micarta one. But this one right here is the micarta and this one is the G10. You can see that obvious difference there. Okay, you see both sides. Here's the back, here's the front. It looks like they are both centered. All right, put this here to the side and kaboom. There it is, ladies and gents. I gotta tell you, it's pretty dope. I, I, I do like the look on it, okay? Now, a couple things I'm gonna go ahead and point out here, okay? First and foremost, I will say they did fix, yeah, they did fix the thumb studs. And the thumb studs are kind of cool because it has this kind of like conical design, okay, where it's like thick at the base and then it kind of tapers a little bit. 
and it goes just past the handle. As you can see right there, it's not too, too, too far, but if you are right next to the handle, that, um, that placement of the thumb stud is really, really easy uh, for this to deploy. And uh, you have two screws and the pivot on one side. You have the pivot, you have the two screws, and then you have the screws that hold the, uh, the pocket clip on the other side. Uh, pocket clip itself is still shiny. It's not stonewashed, uh, which if you look at the flats here, they are stonewashed, which is why they're not gleaming here. And then you have a satin uh, blade grind. And you have that secondary grind up here towards the front. And I'll get to that in a second because I do want to talk about that. That's going to be in my comments, but I'll tell you why, okay? Uh, this is not set up for uh, left-hand carry. Sorry, lefties. And then you do have that pivot that has that B on it. It looks like kind of like an 8. I guess it could be an 8, but in this case, it's Best Tech. So it's a Best Tech B, all right? D-Tool, D2, <laughs> D-Tool Steel, right? D2 Tool Steel is on here and I'm not really the biggest fan of that because uh, like I said before um, in other videos the issue with D2 steel isn't that it's it's an issue but like everybody's using D2 steel and I'm kind of over it because it's like guys you've got you've got with the advent of a lot of these more budget steels that can perform you know, you have Artisan Cut or uh, CBV and uh, what am I talking about? Artisan Cutlery and CGRB with their RPM9, which is proprietary, okay? But you have CBV with their 9CR18 MOV or their 10CR15 uh, MOV, um, or I'm sorry, 10CR15 CO MOV. Sorry, there's two letter, too many letters and numbers in that. Um, you have 14C28 in steel that's being used. You even have 154CM like you saw with the uh, the Falco that they actually sent out. That's considered a budget steel because it's along the parameters of something like VG10, only it um, what it lacks in corrosion and, and rust resistance, it actually excels in uh, age, edge stability. Um, having something like this is more along the lines of just like a meh budget steel now. And I'm gonna keep saying it, it is what it is. They gotta, they gotta, you know, they, they, they gotta do better than that. I'm sorry, it is what it is. So, um, so I'll start it with that and get this out of the way because the truth is the review is on the fully functional knife, which is gonna be this one. I'm assuming this is gonna be a little bit cheaper than the Mike Carter version, but I do wanna go ahead and show the specs so you'll see it on, on the right side. I'll go ahead and show both knives next to each other. Obviously the Mike Carter is a little bit smoother than the G10, you will get a little bit more grip on the G10 version, which I happen to like quite a bit. I'm actually a G10 kind of guy. If you had to go ahead and show me a titanium knife as opposed to G10, I'd actually take the G10 uh, about nine times out of 10, unless it's more like a uh, textured G10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the sake of um, comparing knives. I'm gonna put one here and I'm gonna put one down here, okay? Just so you can see both. See if I can get both of them centered, or well, that's okay. Yeah, looks about right, right? There we go, okay. So I'll do that and then uh, show off a couple of knives as comparison. So first off, we're gonna go with um, this, a new Kaiser I picked up. This is the Rapids. I'm gonna go ahead and line up the pivot so you can see it's a little bit longer in the blade and a little bit longer in the handle. It's a Carlos Elsner design in, oh, you guessed it, 154CM. Hmm. You have the uh, Spyderco Para 3, which is about the size of both S30V. This is just the plain Jane version. Okay, uh, on to the next one. We have uh, the Civivi Odium, another D2 dude uh, from Civivi. I did a review on that. Be sure to go ahead and check that out. Um, what else do we have? What else do we have here? Do I have, um, what do I have on me? Ah, here we go. This is the Best Tech Eye of Raw. Surprisingly, D2 tool steel. Guys, they're killing me with this D2, man. And then uh, one for the sake of the fact that People want more than just one uh, memorable knife that pretty much everybody has. Uh, if you guys don't have this from Benchmade, you guys you guys are slipping. This is the Benchmade mug out. Uh, M390 blade with the aluminum uh, textured handle. Really, really awesome knife. About the same size, maybe a little bit longer. Okay, so back to the knives. Now, uh, I did talk about the, uh, the D2 steel. Okay, I did talk about the stone wash flats and the, the grind. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the blade a little bit. Now, the blade is such that there is a little bit of belly here. You can't really see it, it's not straight. It's not worn with straight. It's kind of like just a little bit of belly. And then obviously from here, it breaks upwards. That gives a nice robust tip. It's actually pretty good for stuff like that. You know, it's kind of pierce and then just 
kind of slides through with this uh, belly portion of the blade. It's a nice high grind. So even though it may be a little bit thicker of a blade stock, you're gonna get a nice, uh, uh, you know, cutting edge on this. So this being a tool, this is gonna excel at that. And when I hold it naturally in the hand, my thumb gravitates towards the jimping, which is not, uh, it's not overly, uh, it just feels well machined, I'll be honest. I would have liked to have just maybe a little bit more because my thumb tends to extend a little bit. Uh, just being the way that the uh, handle is set up, you know, when it when it allows me to go ahead and choke up and get all four fingers on here, uh, just my hand tends to extend a little bit past the jimping, okay? It tends to, to go like to about here. So if they would have at least done jimping to here, I would have been cool with it. So, you know, just that. I'm not, I'm not trying to be pedantic or anything. Um, the the action is also on bearings just like the other but this one's a little stiffer presumably because it's new and people haven't really messed with it but as you can see it is pretty drop shut i'll give it that and then i gotta hand it to the placement of the thumb studs they're actually really good okay um so the d2 is just a, a con for me and it's going to keep being a con you know from now to the end of time um the pocket clip while it's deep carry it, it's it's still it could have been a little bit farther back I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, it's kind of got that spoon uh, look, that deep carry clip. So it is gonna have some retention in the pocket. In fact, let me go ahead and show it in the pocket. Get this uh, bad boy right here. Ye old uh, pocket square, if you will. <laughs> go ahead and close this and then just add it into the pocket here so you can see just how it looks, okay? Even with some orange, that little pop, you, as you can see here, that's how it's gonna look in the pocket. Okay, so uh, when you are carrying it, that's about as much as going to uh, pop out there. Okay, very easy to get out. And um, on to my next gripe. Now, when you are um, when you're sharpening this knife, okay, to be able to keep this edge here and then this edge here. Let me go see if I can get it to focus. Okay. You're going to have a certain angle that you're going to have to sharpen here, and then you're going to have a different angle that you're going to have to sharpen here, uh, or else what it's going to do is it's going to have just a very small line here and a small line here. And you want to be able to go ahead and blend it into this grind that's up here. So you're probably going to have to sharpen that to a little bit wider or a little bit more narrow of an angle and have to remember that when you're sharpening uh, this blade. Okay, so you'll have um, you have this you have to go through, uh, you know, on the stones. Okay, and then you're gonna have to use the stones on this little particular area too. All right, that's a little bit more tedious when it comes to actually sharpening the knives. So let me go ahead and wipe this off so the blade is nice and sterile looking in front of the camera. Okay, and um, it, so it's gonna take a little bit more time. Now, for a budget knife, usually somebody just wants something that works, that they can use, and that they can go ahead and resharpen and reprofile whenever they need to. And this is gonna cause a little bit more time and a little bit more trouble for people that aren't used to that kind of knife. So um, with the majority of knives that are out, and just to kind of show the Falco again, because this is a pretty badass knife. You look at this blade, okay? And you can put this on a KME, you can clamp it, you know, on the KME, all right? And you can get a nice, even uh, sharpening from the tip all the way down to the base or from the base of the tip, okay, depending on how you choose to sharpen. All right, with this, even though this is a bigger knife, this is actually gonna take lesser time than the sledgehammer, okay? Now, also, another thing, and I actually just uh, uh, realized it, while the action is already dialed up on this one and it is nice and centered, okay, um, if you end up not placing the meat of your thumb just right by the, uh, the thumb stud, you will feel it. <laughs> you will definitely feel it on your thumb. Granted, that's only happened to me a handful of times, even since I've used the other one, but that is something I wanted to go ahead and point out. Now, um, is that going to be an issue for you? Probably, probably not. Um, but if you are a lefty, sorry guys. Um, if you're wanting to see something like this and something other than D2, as of right now, you're not. You're just going to see different variations of it, with not only the G10, but the Micarta as well. Um, I like the fact that they have different colors on this, and I really like that that orange. Uh, it's a pretty nice uh, setup. And, 
you know, with the exception of the fact that you have the issue with the clip, you know, not being for lefties, and then you have this issue here with the grind for, for you know, sharpening purposes and the D2. Other than that, this is a pretty nice knife. If you had it in an alternate, you know, blade steel, and if you maybe had it tapped for left-hand carry, I could probably look over the fact, you know, that it's got that, uh, that different grind because... In truth, you know, if you really do like it, you're willing to go ahead and buy this for that particular knife shape. There's people that liked it. So, you know, they, they made it. There, there's a reason because there's a market for it. Now, um, people will vote with their pockets as to whether it's a success or not. So it only time will tell if they come out with a different variant. Personally, if Best Tech is listening to this, you need to come out with a different steel for this. Um, and you need to come out with at least your, your scales milled out for left-hand carry. I think that that would be a must for this kind of knife you're missing out on a market that really wants to go ahead and check out knives like these because I think that this is a pretty unique design. Um, and even having it in the budget category, I think that you should, you know, consider maybe a different budget steel other than D2. So that's my review of the Best Tech Sledgehammer. I'm glad that they were kind enough to go ahead and send uh, this one to kind of uh, allow me to finish the review because uh, I did think that this was a pretty cool, pretty unique knife, but there were a couple of details that were glaring that I had mentioned before. But I think that it was pretty cool. They were also uh, willing to go ahead and send me that other knife, uh, which is the Falco. This is this is a pretty nice knife. I'm not going to lie. I'm digging it. So that being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out this review of the Best Tech Sledgehammer. Uh, let me know if you'd be interested in picking one of these up. Um, and if so, in what color variant. And, you know, just let me know what kind of steel you'd like to see in some of their budget knives. That being said, guys, you have been great. I will see you guys next time. Here's some videos for you to check out. And just remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. I'll see you next time. Peace.